Hi and a very warm welcome to today's video tutorial. I'm Chris Watson from Endor Learn and Develop and we're a specialist provider of behaviourally based learning services. During today's programme we're going to have focus on why mentoring works. We'll look at the benefits for the organisation, for the person being mentored, but also for you as the mentor. Some people might feel a little bit apprehensive about being a mentor for the first time, but the chances are you've probably already been a mentor without realising it. Now, while this video tutorial will be a useful for any prospective mentor, it's been designed for those who are volunteering to act as a mentor within an organisation. OK, so uh, let's begin. In terms of what we're going to cover today, there are five themes. We'll have a look at what is mentoring, the benefits to you, the origins and principles of mentoring as a, an effective practice to develop people, and also have a look at who to mentor. Ultimately, mentoring is a human process. Being able to influence someone else's future is a massive responsibility. And there's a well-known story about David Ogilvy, uh, who founded Ogilvy and Mather. Uh, they're one of the largest advertising agencies in the world. And Ogilvy firmly believed that one of the most single important things that any manager can ever do is to identify and develop talent. On arrival, any new employee at the agency was given a Russian doll on their very first day at work. And each worker would open the doll on their desk and find another smaller doll inside until they got to the smallest doll right in the center. And rolled up inside with a little bow on was a handwritten note by David Ogilvy himself. And that handwritten note always said the same thing. If we recruit people smaller than ourselves, then we will become a company of dwarves. If we recruit people who are bigger and better than ourselves, then we will become a company of giants. Let us be giants. Now, this message twofold, really. It says, welcome aboard. You're now part of something bigger. But also that we believe that you have got the talent and the capability to achieve great things. Now, in just the same way, mentoring is all about growing your people showing how they fit in and demonstrating your sincere interest in them and in their professional growth. So what is it? If you were to sort of define mentoring, I think um, a lot of people have got an idea as to what they think it is, but sometimes it gets confused with things like teaching or coaching uh, or even counselling. Uh, and there are elements of all of these, as we'll see in the, in the video that follows this one. But a nice, succinct definition uh, is that mentoring tends to be more informal in nature and it takes a broader view of the person. So it's an ongoing relationship that can sometimes last for a very long time, for years. And it focuses on developing the mentee both professionally and personally. So if you wanted a, a, a definition of, of this sort of a long-term voluntary relationship between two people, uh, it is about providing support and challenge. And I really like this definition, a voluntary relationship with the purpose of providing personal and professional development, support and challenge to them. The idea of sort of passing down wisdom though, has been embedded in popular culture for years, and it can be seen in relationships both inside and outside the workplace. These are obviously just examples from popular culture and from the field of entertainment, but one of the reasons why they all resonate with us is because mentoring does work. And the evidence suggests that the number one thing an employee can do to make a positive impact on their own professional development is in fact to seek out a credible mentor in the workplace. Now, ideally, this should be someone who has some type of experience in the field the mentee is interested in. It doesn't have to be someone necessarily senior, it doesn't necessarily have to be someone with massive wisdom, 
Um, but it should be someone who has got some work life experience in that field. Did you know, for example, musician Ray Charles uh, mentored Quincy Jones? Fashion designer Christian Dior mentored Yves Saint Laurent. And Albert Einstein was mentored by Max Talmud, who actually was a, a, a sort of medical student who popped around to just enjoy a free dinner on a weekly basis. So it isn't to do with seniority, it isn't to do with hierarchy, um, it's just to do with the, some relevance there in terms of that person's expertise or insight. It's been said that a good mentor is, is like a tattoo in that they stay with you forever. And that's probably because they've got the opportunity to make a really lasting impression on the, uh, on the mentee and shape even things like future career choices. So I love this statement by William Arthur. Flatter me and I may not believe you. Criticize me and I may not like you. Ignore me and I may not forgive you, but encourage me and it's likely I won't forget you. Why though? We've covered kind of what mentoring is about. Um, and it's clear that it's been around for many years to mature and, and develop individuals. And indeed, the, the, the use of mentoring continues to grow, but we haven't quite established yet why. There are benefits both to the individual called the, the mentee uh, and also to the organisation. So let's have a look at both of these in turn. First of all, from the individual being mentored, um, it provides improved confidence and self-esteem, gives them new insights into themselves for the opportunity to learn and reflect at work, help them to develop new ways of working and thinking in the workplace. It can be really, really motivational uh, because someone is giving them their time and their attention. Most of all, though, what it should be about is that mentoring should provide people with a greater sense of personal ownership and accountability in the workplace because a fundamental principle is that it puts them in charge this isn't something that's being done to them uh, they're actually a very active partner in this relationship secondly there are there are significant benefits to the organization it helps to develop and retain key staff invests in and develops uh, from within. So not always having to go out of the workplace and then retrain and uh, reappoint uh, and pay for those services. It helps share the organization's values and cultures, supports with succession planning, encourages a greater spread of learning across the organization, improves communication flow, and contribution from uh, everyone. It enhances as well the, the practice of ongoing improvement in an informal way at work. There's also evidence that mentoring can reduce work-related stress uh, and also strengthen cross-functional relationships and build trust. So there are, there are benefits for both the mentee and for the organization. However, there's a, there's a third party as well uh, that hasn't been mentioned. And one way to increase the level reception of any given message is to turn the dial to WII FM or explain what's in it for me. Because mentoring is, of course, a great way to nurture talents, but it's also a great way to develop the skills of the people who are actually mentoring others. And there are a number of benefits to yourself as a mentor. First of all, it helps you to build and develop your own coaching and counselling skills, many of which are applicable not just to the work life, but also to your, your personal life. Helps keep you engaged and increases your sense of personal satisfaction by giving something back and assisting in the growth and the development of others. Can give you increased job satisfaction a sense of pride and purpose in what you do, and also increase peer recognition by being known as a mentor at work. 
It can help you also to increase your own range of internal networks, build your knowledge base, and perhaps reflect on your own job performance. Working with other people can introduce new ways of looking at uh, your, your, your own working practices. Finally, and significantly, it's an opportunity to demonstrate your leadership skills. Now, this is a bit of a shocker, but according to the most recent UK skills gaps in the workplace report, the most common skills deemed to be lacking amongst existing staff are actually all people and interpersonal skills. And what mentoring does more than anything else is refine and polish these important and valued skills. So this is added value. In fact, as it's got here in 2013, there was a report from uh, the Adico Employment Agency that said as many as 79% of workplaces now provide some sort of internal mentoring scheme. Yet, according to the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development, mentoring is still listed by organisations as one of the top leadership skills currently missing amongst their senior staff. So there could be a real payoff here. Now, recent research also suggests that it isn't just organisations that value these interpersonal skills. After years of scouring performance review data, feedback surveys, exit interviews, Google's Project Oxygen identified the eight characteristics that their employees admired the most in their bosses at Google. So they were trying to find out what is it that great managers do? What differentiates average managers from really, really effective ones? Significantly, technical ability, which is, after all, the defining characteristic of, of many people who work at Google, came in last in terms of what people wanted from a boss. Any idea what came in number one? Yes, it was all these softer skills. Specifically, what people wanted was a manager who supported them through investment in them and through coaching. Now, it's true that often people do get promoted for knowing their stuff, for technical ability, for getting things right. However, as you gravitate towards more senior positions, what actually becomes important is how you work through others to deliver results, how you engage them, how you support them. And this is what effective mentoring is all about.